comedy is the only art form with no school. It's still wild, wild west. There's no rule or anything. Just like music, I was playing funk. All of a sudden, here came disco. I was obsolete. All of a sudden, here came uh, hip hop. Disco's obsolete. So everything, every art form is supposed to keep moving. If not, there's a real problem. And I know a lot of comics, for fear of internet comedians, are running out and getting day jobs. Well, that's not really the answer. Because art, you can't have an art form that survives if the people in the art form have day jobs. Anybody that wants to get into comedy, you should study it first. Why and how would they do that? How? Go to comedy clubs. You're lucky when I first got into it, we didn't have as much YouTube, so we didn't have any YouTube stuff, actually. So we had to go to comedy clubs. So you can study YouTube, go to physically go to comedy clubs, and talk to comedians, not young comics like yourself. Try to talk to older comics and let them know, I'm trying to get into comedy, any advice you can give me. Some will. I'll give advice to any young comic that comes up. Some will not. They'll tell you, don't get in the business, we got enough comics, we don't need you. There's like a tester uh, when you're a young comic, how much you can, abuse you can take from older comics. And if you can take a lot of abuse from older comics, you can be a comic. Uh, because there's no amount of abuse you're going to get from an older comic that an audience is not going to give you. So you have to make sure that your, your skin is thick. Uh, record all your shows as a uh, young comic or somebody just starting in comedy. Record it all and be very honest with yourself. When you hear a laugh, that is a good joke. You got to laugh. You didn't hear a laugh, well, try that same joke to more audiences because maybe they didn't get it. Maybe the timing was wrong. Maybe that joke belongs somewhere else in your set. I've had jokes that I thought were opening line jokes and nothing. I try them later on, three quarters in, they're killers. Because the audience is now, they've had a chance to know who you are and, and what they can you. accept yeah. from you and what they're comfortable with. Sometimes you kind of introduce yourself too early to them or you expose your warts too early and they, I don't even know you yet. You know, once they've got to know you, you can pretty much say anything you want. Be very judgmental, be very critical of yourself as a young comic. Do not be afraid to ad lib. This is a rule of thumb, and I hope you, you follow this. Get a solid five or ten minute act that you can take anywhere. Solid. And from that, build another five, build another five, build another five. Before you know it, you got 30 or 45 minutes. But within, once you get that solid act, be able and don't be afraid to jump off track and say something else that has nothing to do with that. Like if somebody comes in the back of the room and they're wearing a funny suit, don't be afraid to say it. Don't be afraid to live in the moment. To call the elephant out in the room. Right, because other people are tripping it. If, if the mic goes, if the sound goes off in the microphone, don't be afraid to put the microphone down and say something like, where'd you get this radio shack, you know, crap, or whatever you want to say. Don't be afraid to do it because you're exercising that ad lib thing and it goes back to what I said earlier. Nobody knows your act. They don't know if that was part of your act or not. Yeah. If you didn't get to say what you wanted to say in that moment, but you came up with something funny after, write it down because there will be a next time. There will always for be you a next to time. Use, always, it always for you repeats. to use that opportunity. You have to keep your material fresh. A lot of uh, comedians have their act and they just keep doing their act or derivatives of their act, their act, their act, their act. You have to grow. There were two great comedians. We had Richard Pryor and you had George Carlin. And it was always, it was never a question of who was number one, who was number two. It was always Pryor was one, Carlin was two. In recent years, others, including myself, look at Carlin as one and Pryor as two. The reason for that is Pryor was kind of like the Beatles. He did a hot 10 years that were blazing hot. And then the rest of it was just kind of like former shell of what he was. Carlin stayed current from the time he was the hippy dippy weatherman up until the, the seven words he couldn't say on TV, up until he was an old man, he was still relevant with what he was talking about. You have to go to the gym, you have to work out. Some people call it open mics, I call it where you can drop in somewhere and do some time and work out a new joke. But then when you're getting paid to do stand up, don't do new jokes unless you're a hundred percent confident in that joke. But you're getting paid to be at the performance level of whoever has hired you, be at that level that they hired you for. Don't go up there experimenting and horsing around. 
Because not only is that their money, which they'll make more, it's your reputation, which you can't make another. Once your reputation is shot that I hired this guy and he came up, he had a pad, he's he's doing new jokes. I'll never hire the guy. What unprofessional? Once they use the word unprofessional, then your goose is pretty much cooked. Sometimes they watch really great comics who craft stuff, and because they say a curse word, they that's what they the joke. zoom in on. Paul Mooney said if you're a joke, and he would know if your joke has to end in a curse word, you don't have a joke. Curse words are supposed to be the spice. They're not supposed to be the meal. They're the icing. They're not the cake. So if I'm in a place where people are drinking liquor, I probably will curse. If I'm in a place where they're drinking smoothies, I probably won't because it's the mindset of the audience. It's like playing for old people versus younger people. You know, I can do a Cardi B joke all day long in front of young people. Old people, they don't get it. <laughs> I did, I did it. I was in Cocoa Beach, Florida. I told a Cardi B joke, and they all stared at me, and I said, well, my daughter wrote that joke for me, and I don't get it myself. And then they laughed. <laughs> Nobody knows your act. Like when you screw up in your act or, you know, you're, you're off track or you, you don't really know where you want to go next. Nobody knows that except you. So if you tip them off, then yeah, your, your entire set can be destroyed. But if you learn certain techniques... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. If you learn certain, te that was a technique. That wasn't a real cough. That was a BS cough. That was a cough to stall. And you can do that on stage anytime you want to. You can go ahead and grab the microphone stand and put the mic in it while you're stalling and act like you're getting ready to do a bit, but you were stalling. Learn stall techniques on stage because our main thing is we have to remain entertaining. You can drop the microphone if you want. Anything so you mentally can get back on track, but for you're not standing there looking at the audience like, uh, I'm lost. Never let them see you sweat. I got booed at the Apollo Theater by the Apo the entire Apollo. This is when I was, uh, I had broken out demilitized. I had on the, the, beret. Uh, the beret, and I had on a dashiki, and I had on shades. And I said, I'm gonna lake them. And the entire place started booing. And this happened, and now this is funny because it happened in October of 1992. November of 1992, Malcolm X came out. I went back February of 1993 and played the Apollo. Assalamu alaikum. Yay! Everybody's on their feet here. Because they didn't understand and what, it was what I was talking about before. And same place, not the same audience, obviously, right. but same place, same act, same guy, but a little bit of knowledge changed everything. Write down your goals. You have to have short term goals, which are the immediate set that night. Have a goal for that week. How many shows do you want to do that week? Uh, how many new jokes do you want to write for that week? How many new jokes do you want to perform? Fact, how many jokes uh, that you've been working on do you want, finally want to put closure to? What do you want to do this month? How many shows do you want to do this year? How many paid shows? Because there's a difference. I asked Don D.C. Curry because I, I was telling him, well, man, I've done about 6,000 6, shows. And he said, I've done 8,922 shows. He knew the exact number. And I said, how do you know that? He said, well, I started keeping track when I first started, but part of that 2,952 are shows that I did um, as podcasts, but I did monologues on each one, and the other 6,950. So he knew he, the he breakdown. Track. And he said, after tonight, it will be, because we were at one of his podcasts, and he said, after tonight, it will be blah, 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 blah. As a young comic, this is your sport. If you can keep stats of basketball players and you know how fast a track person can run and all that, keep your own stats. Yes. I, I've had comics that have told me, have said to me, it's like, well, man, I, li I, like, I like comedy, man, but I don't like the game. I said, but you're a sports fanatic. How can you not like your own game? Keep a piece of paper and a pen, or at very least, your cell phone to record. And the reason I say paper and pen is because cell phone can run out of the battery you can be out of the signal area. Any weird thing can happen with electronics or technology. You got a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper. You'll be able to write down whatever you want to. Yeah. And it's there. And I'm a believer to do index cards. Okay. Put your put your jokes on index cards. That's a good point. Because then you can shift around if you're you know build your set like yes, that. Yes. Yes. Because then one. you you know if you if you go in if you go in the smoothie room and then your next set is in the bar. And you need, you know, you can't do the same jokes. You have, Those you can cars. swap them out. And I learned that from opening for Patrice Russian. Nice, okay. Because during the week, the audience stayed for both shows. And I only had one set. set. Okay. And then I had to do the set again for the same, same people. Yeah. And so I started learning, wait a minute. And so during the week when mm -hmm. it was the same audience and they were not 
are leaving like the weekend audience, I started learning, wait a minute, okay, what material do I want to yeah, do? How can right. I switch it up? They already heard this, but yeah. if I do it in a different way, it, it's going to fool them a little right. bit. No, I mean, it it's the, it still, it's it, the it same. It can't be by rote. It can't right. be yeah, right. like a robot. Right, yeah. and, and that really does help. And it, there's something about the cards. You know, uh, what I love is Joan Rivers used to catalog her jokes in cards. I didn't, I, I didn't cards. know that either until wow. later I, I, I saw her uh, documentary and she had like wall to wall card uh, files and she would pull it and I, this is this was this joke and this what I was like I am so impressed. Yeah, Carlin does that too. Seinfeld does that. There are comics who write down everything. They can tell you the set they did in 1999, March 12th, and all of that. And they are shocked by comics who do not obsessively write like that. Um, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I write down a whole lot of jokes, and I've got bags and boxes of jokes that I haven't got to. And, I, and I've been trying to like, you know, get to them and all that, but then you get so consumed with the set that you're doing. Comedy is the only art form with no school. It's still Wild Wild West. There's no rule or anything. Just like music, I was playing funk. All of a sudden, here came disco. I was obsolete. All of a sudden, here came uh, hip hop. Disco's obsolete. So everything, every art form is supposed to keep moving. If not, there's a real problem. And I know a lot of comics, for fear of internet comedians, are running out and getting day jobs. Well, that's not really the answer. Because art, you can't have an art form that survives if the people in the art form have day jobs.